um, and I'm specifically going to focus on human evolution and evolution. The reason I'm doing this is that if we take a look at it, if you take a look at the screen, 40, uh, that is uh, 29 plus 15. So you'll see a large degree of the paper. So that gives me 44% of the paper is actually evolution and human evolution on paper two. So it's a pretty big part of paper two. And that's why it's important for us to go through the topic. Most of this topic you can study on your own, but there is a few things that I want you to note while we go through today's lesson. Okay, this first question, and I did post the memo already on Google Classroom, so you can go and take a look. So I'm not worried specifically about the answers that I'm gonna go through today, just the way that you answer them, so that you know how to answer them. This is a typical short question of that section, and you will get one or two of these. Um, and so for specific examples, you have to know some detail, like who discovered which one, uh, which fossil. Uh, so the few, few important fossils, um, with regards to South African examples, mainly cradle of humankind examples. Uh, now, the, the specific people that worked on these examples are like, for example, Lee Berger. And um, if you take a look at Louis and Mary Leakey, they actually worked on examples that are in the Great Rift Valley on the eastern side of Africa not South Africa specifically. They, they tend to favor South African examples. Um, so, for example, like Australopithecus sediba or Karabu, the specific fossil that was found was Karabu. Um, Lee Berger found that one. Um, so, take a look at South, the South African examples. And these are specifically, this is also a cradle of humankind fossil. Let's just quickly go through the name. Australopithecus means, Australo means from the south. Australopithecus, seven ape man, um, basically. Australopithecus, seven. Australia, if you think of Australia, it's the most southern con continent. So um, that's why Australo means south. Pithecus means ape man. Then, if we take a look at the rest of the, the example, the name, okay, the common name for this specific fossil was Karabu, which means knowing or discovery. Um, and that's why Karabu is, is, um, is the name given to this specific fossil. There was actually a competition when this fossil was discovered. Um, and basically, what what was done is that it, um, they sent out a competition in schools and asked, can you give this fossil a name? And a grade 11 student, as far as I remember, won the competition and gave the name Karabu to this specific fossil. Professor Lee Berger, still doing research up to this day, is also the one that discovered um, the in the I'm trying to think the name now. It's also Australopithecus example. Um, Australopithecus Nadi uh, Naledi. Naledi. He also discovered. He was also part of the group. He was the main one in charge of the research team that discovered Australopithecus Naledi, or Homo. Sorry, Homo Naledi. Now these two are very closely related. Homo and Australopithecus, as you'll see in the next question. So let's take a look at the next question. So this is a typical question that you would find with what we call a cladogram. And the clado, um, a, a cladogram um, shows the origin of certain species and how they, they then how other species originated out of a single species. 
Now, very important in terms of the theme for this specific section of work is that we have a common ancestor with some of the other great apes. Now, be very careful when interpreting what I'm saying now. We have a common ancestor with, for example, pan troglodytes, which is the chimpanzee. This does not mean that you are originating out of an ape. Um, that is not what it's saying. It's, it says that us and the apes have a common ancestor. Now, be also very careful of thinking that this goes against uh, creationism. Um, and please go watch the videos that are posted, uh, the TED videos and so that are posted with regards to this. Um, just for your own, um, for yourself, please make sure that you know the difference and what ni is nice with you guys is you actually know the difference between, uh, because you take religion studies, between creationism, evolutionism, and the two can actually, if you take a look at it, walk hand in hand. Now, this is not necessarily going against your beliefs. So please go and take a look at the videos because if you take a look at evolution and what happens in Genesis 1, we can actually relate the two to one another in a lot of senses. So make sure that uh, you go through that just to ease yourself and mind because I don't want you to create a block in your, in your head when we do this section. Because it's such a large amount of morph, you cannot afford not to go through this section just because of your beliefs. And this section doesn't go against your beliefs. Uh, so please just reassure yourself and go watch those videos. Okay, so let's take a look at, at this question. In this cladogram, uh, we can see there's different species, one great ape, uh, other than those that are hominid. Uh, they're all homonin. But only this side is homo nit. These are homo nits. This is a homo nit. All of them are homo nit. But homo nits, that's this side of the spectrum. Okay, so the, if we take a look at, at the lines, um, if we, for example, take a look at one of the ones that we're going to use commonly in this example, Australopithecus africanus, southern ape man coming from Africa. We can see that he originated over there. And if we, if we take a look at the timeline and we draw a line across the timeline, draw a line over there. Uh, let me just shift that line a bit to where it's supposed to be so it's straight. Okay. So that's where it originated about three million years ago. And then we can also see we became extinct over there. His line stops there. And so he became extinct about one million years ago. Now, if we take a look at this, we will also see, for example, that we, we outlived, we're the only hominid species left. We outlived all the other hominid species, and so that we don't have really have any direct family in terms of evolution anymore. We outlived all the other species and probably outcompeted all of the other species. The main reason for this is not because we are actually stronger, but we were more adapted to change or the changes that happened that, um, on Earth for the current situation. And so, for example, our closest relative year was Homo neanderthalensis, and new research shows that we actually interbred with Homo neanderthalensis. Uh, so uh, it's not totally a separate species. They actually reclassified Homo neanderthalensis 
It's actually now called, we are Homo sapiens subspecies sapiens, Homo sapiens sapiens. And Homo neanderthalensis is actually now Homo sapiens subspecies neanderthalensis because we actually had communion. We actually had children with neanderthalensis. So uh, we could interbreed and have kids and their kids could have kids. Let's take a look at the questions. Name the most recent ancestor of the Homo genus. Uh, Homo genus. So here we go, Homo erectus, Homo sapiens, Homo neanderthalensis, and Homo habilis, all originated out of Australopithecus africanus. There's the split over there, another split over there, and another split over there. But by that, by that split, um, Australopithecus africanus was no longer on Earth anymore. So all the splits came out of Australopithecus africanus. So this is our common ancestor for all Homo habilis, which was also called commonly handyman, Homo erectus, which means for the one that stands upright, Homo sapiens, um, Homo sapiens is then us, Okay, and then Homo neanderthalensis, as I told you, which is uh, the common caveman, as we refer to them. It actually means, neanderthalensis means it comes from the Neander Valley. Neander Valley, the first Homo neanderthalensis was found in uh, the Neander Valley in Germany. So, second question. Give the period of existence for the species mentioned in question 1.4.1. Now I've already done that with the two lines that I've drawn across here. And unfortunately this line is not very readable. It's about 300 million years ago up to about 100 million years ago. Now according to the memo, it actually says 2.8 million years ago. But they do give you, they would give you some leeway of a, um, on this line over here because they know that it's not that readable. So if you say 300 million years ago to 1 million years ago, that's perfectly fine. Then, state the number of genera represented in the diagram. Okay, so the number of genuses. Okay, genera is the plural for genus. Genera, let's take a look. There's pan, that's one. There's ardipithecus, that's two. There's Paranthropus, that's three. There's Australopithecus, that's four. And there's Homo, that is five. So there are five genera within this diagram. So, Can I ask you? Yes. Um, sorry, what's 1.4.1? 1.4.1, 1 .1, we said was Australopithecus africanus. Australopithecus africanus. Because all of the Homo, Homo species split out of uh -huh. Australopithecus africanus. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. Then, um, based on the diagram, give one facial feature that differentiated humans from Australopithecus africanus. We're not prognathus. Okay, so prognathus means that if you have a protruding chin, protruding chin, then you're prognathus. So you see it, uh, if you take a look at Australopithecus africanus, its chin is sticking out, okay. Um, and then again, for Homo habilis, chin is sticking out, uh, Neanderthalensis chin is sticking out, Homo erectus chin is sticking out. So all of these, they, they have this, this mouth, their mouth parts are sticking. Look at Australopithecus ramidus. It's sticking out tremendously. But as we move from down here to up to where we are, you can see that our face has become more flattened. Um, so the slope of our face is more flattened. We don't have this chin sticking out. Uh, a common uh, example that they give, I'm just going to draw, uh, take a, uh, over there a, an arrow. If we draw an, a line, that goes down the slope of the face. You can see that line is twisted over there. If I go to pan, it's even more twisted. So I have to, it's it's slanted. There we go. If we take a look at Ardipithecus, it's even more slanted. 
But let's take this now to Homo sapiens. And then you will see that if I had to draw it on our Homo sapiens, we get um, it almost goes down straight down instead of slanted. And so we don't have a sloped face. We are not prognathous. 1.4.5, identify any so, two species. Yes. So is it a protruding jaw or is it a protruding chin? Okay, so it's uh, the chin and the jaw. Um, if you, okay, uh, it's, if you take a, if you take a look over there, it's that whole area around the, um, but it's, it's that whole jaw chin area. So it's, it's not specifically, okay, so like how many under the lenses, you can see the chin is going back, but the, the jaw is going to the front. So just the, referring to the whole area, just being more in front of the face than the rest. Okay, so let's take a look at 1.4.4. Based on the diagram, we, oh no, 1.4.5. Identify any two species that used both tools and fire. Okay, so for this, you actually have to know the work very well. The main two species uh, that I know has used tools, uh, Homo habilis has used tools, and Homo sapiens, us, we've used tools. And I think these are the two species that they are referring to. I'm just quickly going to double check on my memo to make sure that I'm not lying to you. Um, but as far as I remember, that's a question you're going to have to, to study, to know. Just give me two seconds. Let me just put my phone on silent here. Everybody's starting to wake up now. There we go. All right, no, that's not what I wanted. File, open. Okay, 1.4.4. Okay, so they say Homo erectus, Homo sapiens, and Homo neanderthalensis will all fall into that. So Homo habilis does not fall into that. He used tools, we called him handyman, but he didn't use fire. So they're saying these top three species are the ones that actually used fire and tools. Okay, so next question. Name one Australopithecus africanus fossil found in South Africa. Um, okay, so that's Karabu. Karabu is a common one. Um, that's probably the most common Africanus species um, that is found in. Um, the other ones are also uh, Littlefoot, Mrs. Place, and Tom Child. Then. Oh, sorry, uh, my mistake. It's Littlefoot, Mrs. Place, and Tom Child. Um, Karawu was Australopithecus sediba, not Africanus. So, Tom Child, Mrs. Place, and Littlefoot. Littlefoot and Mrs. Place was found very close to one another. Then, List two types of evidence that can be used to support the out of Africa hypothesis. Now, somewhere you go in, in your paper, you're going to find some question about the out of Africa uh, theory. Um, they love asking it as part of an essay question, but at least two of your marks of that paper, and up to about seven marks out of the paper, is going to be the out of Africa theory. Now, main things around the uh, out of Africa theory is um, there's fossil evidence, there's the mitochondrial DNA evidence, and there's also cultural evidence that shows that 
humans originated originally out of Africa and then moved to the rest of the world. Oh yes, I see now where they got use of stone tools and use of fire. Um, so if we take a look, um, they actually indicated it over on the side here. So for question um, 1.4.5, I see they found it on the side here. So this is when the use of tools started and this is where the use of fire started. And so that's where they got the answer for uh, 1.4.5. Okay, then.